Hi, it's Mike with AskTractorMike.com. Had a couple of questions from viewers today, both about PTO driveline protection. And they've both got issues. One's got an issue with too much driveline protection, and one has an issue with not enough driveline protection. So any PTO powered implement has likely got some kind of, of driveline protection either a shear bolt that goes through the shaft or in a mechanism that is designed to break when you hit something you shouldn't or a slip clutch which is a bunch of clutches together under pressure and when you hit something those clutches are supposed to give and keep you from damaging either your gearbox or something on the tractor or inside the tractor so the two letters today first is from Jimmy and Jimmy says I was brush hogging today and I ran over a stump about 10 inches in diameter. Shook the entire tractor and moved it over just a tiny bit. Everything seems fine and I was able to keep brush hogging. How touchy are the PTOs and three point hitches on a tractor? It's an older John Deere tractor that I got from a retired guy. It's in nice shape. It looks okay, but I didn't know if there was something I needed to do. Jimmy's one to know, did he hurt his tractor? Well, as my mom always said, you probably didn't do it any good. But the bigger question is why didn't something give in the protection area? Why didn't a shear bolt break or a slip clutch slip in order for you to not have damage to your tractor, not stop your tractor and make, make what I'm sure was an awful noise? The second question today comes from Alice. And Alice is a 67-year-old unmechanical woman who started farming at the age of 60. And last year she bought a Kubota and a uh, mower, and I'm not going to say the brand. And her problem with the mower is the shear pins are constantly breaking. She says, I buy the recommended shear bolts and start the mower with low RPM, gradually building the RPM up to the recommended level. Uh, she mentions the ground is a little bit rough. And when she breaks the shear bolt, she can never get the broken bolt out and has to call friends to fix it for her. Would she be better off with a mower that has the slip clutch instead of the shear bolts, or would I be constantly having to adjust the slip clutch? Would rough ground knock the slip clutch out of the right tension all the time? Well, we're going to address both of these issues today. I'm going to talk quite a bit about shear bolts, and then I'm going to talk about slip clutches and the advantages and disadvantages of both and which is better. Let's get started. Let's start out today talking about shear bolts and the different kinds. This is a shear bolt from my post hole digger, and it's a special bolt. It's a, I don't know whether you can see it or not, but it's got a tapered shaft that gets, it's bigger here than it is here. So that goes in, and then this nut goes on, and it's, it's special. I've got to buy that from the manufacturer of the post hole digger. They love that because that makes them parts business. Now I could just take a bolt this size and put it through, but that's probably hardened in areas and not in others, designed to break whenever you hit something. Those post hole augers are under a tremendous amount of pressure, and I'm willing to invest whatever this costs uh, to put the special shear bolt back in my post hole digger when I break them. Now the other kind of bolt, and this is what's in most rotary cutters, just a regular bolt, and it's probably like this one, a grade five. If you have three uh, marks on the top of it, it's a grade five. If it's metric, it'll have a number on it, and it'll usually be an 8.8, .8, or if there's no marking on it, it's either a, I think a 4.6 or a 5.8. Now one problem you can get into with shear bolts is, and, and just regular bolts like this, if the manufacturer recommends too light a grade bolt, you may have to move up a grade or you're shearing bolts all the time. That's the first thing I'm going to tell Alice is if you're right now, maybe the manufacturer is recommending a grade 2 bolt or, or a metric uh, like a 4.6 or a 5.8 and if you're shearing those all the time, you might move up to a grade 5 like this one or an 8.8 .8 in metric, a, a little heavier bolt. It's going to give you a little bit less protection, but you're not going to be changing that bolt all the time. So that is a possibility. Alice, I'm going to tell you something else. 
uh, and, and this is bad news because you already own the cutter, but certain cutters are real easy to change the shear bolt in. This is my Bush Hog brand SQ720 that I've had for a long time. And these were really popular cutters in the, in the Brush Hog line. They're not their bottom of the line, they're the move up from the bottom of the line cutter. They'll cut up to two inch material. And as you can see here, the shear bolt goes through a mechanism and it's real easy to get to. If you break this shear bolt, these two pieces are going to come apart and they're going to spin and, and, the, and you can hear it happen on the tractor seat. And, uh, but but the, the actual shear bolt does not go through the shaft and it's real easy to get to. But that costs money to make, so this is one of the step up grades of cutters. When you, when you buy a little more expensive cutter, you get something like this. A lot of cutters have a bolt that goes right through the shaft, and they can be a booger to get to. And I think with your cutter, that's what you're in, in, encountering right now. It's, a, it's probably a bolt that's right back by the gearbox. It goes through the shaft. There's a bunch of shielding in the way, and you can't get to it. So best thing for you to do is try moving up one grade in bolt, and hopefully that's going to last longer. Now one other thing I'm going to tell you, if you watch me on my tractor, if you ever see me engage the PTO, some tractors engage the PTO very abruptly, and, and the new Holland TC40 that I own, I mean she's on when she's on. So whenever I'm engaging the PTO, I'll be at the RPM level of around 1200 to 1600, and then I'll really slowly move that lever back, and if I move it back too fast, it'll shear that shear pin every time. So sometimes it could be the tractor's fault and the reason that you're shearing those shear pins. Now one thing I'll tell you, uh, I've, I've harped on this this year, but if you're mowing too low over rough ground, or maybe you've got too much of a rake from back to front in your brush hog and you're, and you're plowing part of the time, you're cutting dirt and rocks, uh, you, check your owner's manual and see what kind of a rake from the back to the front. In other words, how much lower is it supposed to be in the front than the back? I see a lot of folks that have their, their cutters way low in the front and high in the back and those blades are aimed down and they're going into dirt and that really puts a lot of pressure on the drive line. So make sure that is set right and, and that might cure the problem. Now let's talk a little bit today about the advantages of a shear bolt and the advantage of a slip clutch. The advantage of a shear bolt, it's always there. It's always working. You never have to do anything to it. The other advantage of a shear bolt, usually it's about five or six hundred dollars cheaper when you're buying a new machine to get a shear bolt protected machine versus a slip clutch. The advantage of a slip clutch is it's always working if it's adjusted right. And a slip clutch, when you hit something you shouldn't and the blades stop, the slip clutches will give. And so your PTO is going around from the tractor back to the slip clutches, and then from the slip clutches to the gearbox and down to the blades is stopped. And sometimes you may see smoke coming out of those slip clutches, uh, but it's stopped everything. You kick the PTO off, back up, and go over your uh, stump or whatever you're on top of, and then when you turn it back on, it's working fine. But the problem with the slip clutch and the disadvantage of a slip clutch is it has to be adjusted. Every year, you really need, and, and every slip clutch is a little bit different. I'm going to post a video here at the end uh, showing me adjusting a slip clutch. But generally what you do is you loosen the bolts that hold the clutches together and you engage your PTO several times to burn those clutches in and then you tighten everything back up and you know it's working. Now I suspect with Jimmy, he's either got like a grade 8 bolt in his shear bolt and he's got no protection there or he's got a slip clutch that has never been slipped. So which system is better, a slip clutch or a shear bolt? Personally, I don't like having to adjust the slip clutch every single year. I'm not big on maintenance, I hate to tell you. So I prefer a shear bolt. And the bolts I've got in this tractor, the grade five bolts, seem to work just fine. If I hit something I shouldn't, they'll break, and otherwise they're giving me protection. If you're somebody that meticulously maintains your tractor, you may want to go with a slip clutch, and, but you, every year, especially in moist climates like I'm in, you've got to adjust that thing and burn those clutches in to make sure it's working. So which one's better? I like the shear bolt. You may like the slip clutch. And Alice, slip clutch, you'll never have to get back there and, and, and 
pull out those bolts and get them fished back in and put a new shear bolt in. So maybe that's a better system for you. You're going to have to change a lot of stuff back there and it's going to be expensive to do it. You might consider trading the cutter in to get a slip clutch equipped cutter. I survive on web traffic. I appreciate you watching my videos. If you'd like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'd be greatly honored. Click the Mike Face icon and check the bell so you're notified when I post future videos. Here's the Tractor Fun Store. Check out all the stuff I've got on my website for tractor owners. And here's the video about slipping a slip clutch. If you've got that system, watch that. Thanks for watching.